Okay, looks like we are going live now. And I'm here just to talk for a few minutes about the intermediate disturbance hypothesis. The basic idea is not too difficult, right? Uh, the basic idea is that uh, when there is disturbance of one kind or another, it could be fire, it could be flood, it could be volcano, it could be herds of animals coming through, whatever. Whenever there's disturbance, it's going to affect some species more than others, or it, that it affects species in different ways. So in the example that we worked through, uh, we see that you know grass comes back very quickly after a fire. That makes total sense. And that it takes oak trees a much longer time to come back after a fire. That makes sense. So really all we're looking at is how much species diversity is in an area and how does that get affected by disturbance. So there are a lot of things that can affect species diversity. Like there's going there, there will be a lot more species in the tropics than in northern latitudes. And it has nothing to do with amounts of disturbance. It has to do with how much sunlight and how much water and the temperature and things like that. So this isn't the only thing that can have an impact on diversity but it does have an impact on diversity, right? We know that if we, um, okay, if we just start our little simulation here, and I don't remember what the settings are right now. Um, well, there are no fires per year is how it's happening right now. And with no fires, eventually the bare ground that we started with will eventually go to trees majoring in oak and hickory. Now, how much time has gone by? 130 years. So in 130 years, we pretty much have just two species happening. Let me reset that. I'm gonna just go, boom, right there. Look at that, after 15 years, we have a pretty high diversity index, 5.45. What do these numbers mean? The diversity index, the way that we're using it, which is the inverse, Simpson's inverse diversity index, um, the way that we're using it, the highest number is the total number of species that, that are in the system. So here we have grasses as one species, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the highest possible number would be eight. To get eight, you'd have to have all of them equal numbers. So you're not going to ever get eight. But if you get seven, that would be very high. The lowest number would be one, where you have 100% of one species and nothing of anything else. And um, well, or close to one in this case, since there will always be other species at least present in some numbers. So after 15 years, we actually have pretty high diversity. So I'm going along and oh, now we have even more diversity here. Uh, and things are transitioning. We're having fewer grasses and annuals. Now we're getting the white pines and the sugar maples are coming up. But we still have a lot of shrubs, a lot of blackberries, uh, quite a few annuals, that sort of thing. Okay, so our diversity over time, boom. Now, what is it? it's been 43 years since this was bare ground. The oaks and hickory are starting to take over, especially right now the oak trees are dominant. And um, there's still grass, but there's a lot less grass than there was at the beginning. We still have high diversity. Go a little longer though. And what we're noticing is that it's going, you know, it's ecological succession. And the dominant species in this system are the oak and hickory. That's just, so without any disturbance, it will eventually mature to a system that's dominated by oak and hickory. And so the diversity index will go down. Now it's below three. It's not gonna go below two probably because the other species are present in some small number. Um, okay. So when we add fire, the whole point of the exercise is to try adding different uh, settings, right? 
different amounts of disturbance. So uh, they suggest, you know, chance of uh, the average number of fires per year, 0.5. That's a 50% chance that there'll be a fire in a given year. Let's say there's only a fire every 10 years. So there's a 0.1% chance, a 10% chance of fire. And the chance of the fire spreading, let's do it at 30% here. Um, I'm not even going to reset the system. I'm just going to hit go. Because right now we have it's oak and hickory dominant. And every now and then a little bit of fire. And sometimes the fire is a little bit bigger. But it stays an oak and hickory system. Mostly hickory. Now there are little brief flare-ups, you know, where some of these other species show up. But on the whole, the fires don't cover too much of the landscape. And so it stays low diversity system here. There was a big fire. And for a moment, things are more diverse. Um, and basically, if you play with this, you're going to see that the number of fires per year uh, or how you know how many years between a fire doesn't have as much effect as the chance that that fire will spread over a large area. So I changed it to a 50% chance of spreading now and we're seeing a diversity index that was above seven there for a little bit there. So it slowly goes down but bam every now and then a big fire wipes everything out kind of resets the system keeps them uh, any one of them from dominating and so this is the idea of the intermediate disturbance is that there's some intermediate amount of disturbance that lends itself to high diversity so what do, what if we have high incidence let's say that there's two fires a year okay if we have two fires a year um, and a 50 percent chance that that fire is going to spread well you know we're moving fast through time here. It's been 580 years since I started this video. Um, that's actually pretty good for the system to have two fires a year uh, in the sense that, you know, good for the system in the sense that there's fairly high diversity index. But if we stop it, we see that there are very few trees. So this is this is more basically a grasslands. It's grass and annuals and blackberries and shrubs and so forth. Um, what if it's just one fire a year? Well, let's say it's a fire every four years, 0.5. Um, well, even if it's only a fire every four years, with that chance of spreading being at 50%, basically it's not enough time for the oak trees and hickory trees to mature. And so it stays more of an open grassland. Uh, that's a very high diversity index at that level. Um, if we say the chance of it spreading is just 0.1, 10% chance of spreading, but let's say there's two fires a year. Um, so we see our fires happening, but they're just not spreading. What's going to happen? It's going to favor the trees again. All right, that's the overall basic idea. Nothing super complicated. Um, if you have specific questions, well, so you had to come up with some hypotheses, try different things, make some graphs. Um, that's great. Um, problem being, we didn't really have a, a way established for you to show me oh you know here's my data sheet you know you could scan it or something and here here are my graphs uh that sort of thing um what did i do you know i ch increasing chance of fire spreading and what is the diversity the simpsons index of diversity and here's the average number of fires per year along with d um and i went from zero up to three fires but Anyhow, um, yeah, I don't get to see automatically your answers. And in particular, I asked you to write a paper 
about you know your hypothesis and testing your hypothesis conduct your experiments using an additional paper or lab notebook when you are done write a short scientific paper summarizing your investigation so let's discuss that as a class uh, do we how, how do we want to do that or what do we want to do there and actually I think it would be great to actually to go out into a field and collect data and you don't need to be able to identify this particular species but you could just say I'm gonna go explore wildflower diversity and just do the things that are in bloom and set yourself some area to work in and say I'm gonna look at wildflower diversity now it has nothing to do with disturbance if you, you know you're not gonna go and disturb a plot and wait 10 years and see what happens but you could try to find areas uh, do do a a vacant lot in a neighborhood that's high high disturbance because the land has been cleared sometime fairly recently and then go see if you can compare it to a less disturbed spot and you know the spot that looks like it hasn't been disturbed in a long time um, how would you calculate the diversity index you're, you're going to have to decide which species you're counting and flowering plants are easy in the sense that you can even if you don't know what they are you can tell them apart and so maybe you can count you know you can say well I distinguish these 10 different and you don't don't feel like you have to identify uh, every plant in the area or anything but you could you could say I'm gonna look at species diversity with these 10 plants that I've kind of learned to distinguish from each other and I'm going to compare these two plots uh, that would be an interesting exercise and something to consider all right um, well, I'm going to pause I'm going to stop this for today uh, just because I want to think a little bit more on what I want uh, for this assignment and because you have other things to work on your you're looking at life history which is due on Monday Okay, we'll stop that for now and get going soon. Thanks, bye.